This is the most luxurious Jeep of all time, and it's $114,000 with this Grand Wagoneer. Now, Jeep here is competing with the likes of the big luxury brands, including the Escalade as well for the American side and the Navigator. And we've got a ton of space, a ton of power, a ton of electric and technology features on the inside. And this is one really impressive vehicle. Aside from the fact that it's completely excess, let's go ahead and get started. All right, y'all, let's take a look at the exterior details of this Grand Wagoneer, and this is one impressive vehicle. So first of all, this does take the body on frame construction from the Ram 1500. And with the trim levels real quick, we have the Series 1, Series 2 Obsidian, Series 3, and Series 3 Obsidian, which we have right here. The Series 2 was actually dropped for 2024. And you get a couple different lengths. This is the standard length, and then you'll get the L, which is about a foot longer. So right up front, this has the Jeep grille, as you can see with those vertical bars right there. What do you think of this front end? I'd love to hear your feedback overall. You've got some black recovery hooks down there as well. This Obsidian model is gonna give us some more gloss black look than what the regular model, like the regular Series 3 is gonna have. But look at these headlights. You've got these sleek LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, and below that we've got LED fog lights, which even give us a cornering function. Be sure to check out my night video to see all the details on the night lighting. Now this white paint is just a pure white. It is definitely a bright white paint paired with these 22 inch wheels. You've got the Grand Wagoneer branding on there with the American flag, definitely a nice little touch. You can even see, see the glossy black mirrors that we're gonna get with the Obsidian model, the black roof, lots of black trim even on the bottom. The mirrors here, as you can see, they do power fold. You've got a turn signal in them. They are heated and the driver's side can automatically dim or they can both tilt down in reverse. Now, as we pan out, let's take a look dimensionally. So this is a big vehicle. It's 214 and a half inches long. The L model, which gives you more space, is a foot longer. So these are definitely big, compete with the Escalade, the Navigator, and all those big three row luxury SUVs. This also has an independent rear suspension different than what you would see with most typical body on frame vehicles. It also has the quadrilift air suspension, which I'll show you in a little bit, and up to 10 inches of ground clearance. LED taillights right here, nothing amber, everything is red, but the sequential turn signal looks pretty nice on here. Grand Wagoneer branding back here as well. So they're definitely going with the Grand Wagoneer as a brand rather than just putting Jeep all over the side of this thing. Now, the one thing I wanna mention is my wife, she came out, she saw this thing from this angle and said, it looks like a bus. She was not impressed. I'd love to know your thoughts. Now coming to the back of the Grand Wagoneer, you get a ton of space. It is a big vehicle, but you get a lot of space. You also get the luxury with it, with this hands-free lift gate. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this is this is the standard length version. You can get the L, which adds wheelbase length and also a foot total length, and you get quite a bit more space behind the third row. Now, in addition to the hands-free lift gate, this space back here is quite impressive. This is a big backpack and there's still enough length to be able to close it. I mean, we don't have a super, super steep corner there to where it impedes on the cargo area, which is awesome. Over here, we've got a couple of little hooks right there. You can really tie something around that. This is your button to close it as well, but I even have that third row right there reclined and it still doesn't impede that much into the cargo area. We've got this 12 volt power outlet right here too. This is great, more areas to hang some stuff. You even have some metal tie downs on each side and you can fold each side down. So hold that button, fold it down, headrest will automatically go down and nice and flat. That one goes down too. It's, it's all, power, all power adjustable. I mean, you've got the third row and the second row power adjustable. And take a look at this. When these actually lay down flat like that and put something on there, this is super flat and super spacious. Take a look at this. Now, the biggest difference between the L and this regular standard version is behind the third row or the overall total space. There's quite a bit more space behind the third row than this standard version. Now take a look at this. Under here, you've even got some extra storage space in our crossbars that can go across the vehicle here too. There is a spare tire under the vehicle, which is always good to see. But you get a ton of space when you fold the second rows down. Oop, that one ran into there. I had that one scooted up a little bit. So that just kind of goes to show, but look at all this cargo space and those seats are nice and flat. 
the only thing that gets in the way are that uh, center armrest in the middle. All right, y'all, one thing that we have with this Grand Wagoneer Series 3 is the adjustable air suspension. So let me show you, we've got different heights. Right now we are in the entry exit height and you can have the vehicle automatically go to this height when you get in or get out. So it's easy loading and unloading. Now we're in the aero height. This is called the aerodynamic height. So it's a little lower than normal, but higher than the entry level. And it's gonna go to this when you're at high speeds to get better efficiency. Let's go up. Now we have our normal ride height. This is gonna be the typical one that you would get even if you don't have the air suspension. And then, boom, we're at off-road number one. So let's go to number two. Now we are at the top one, off-road number two, and this gives us up to 10 inches of ground clearance. Now, as we look at the key fob for this Grand Wagoneer, it is a nice key fob. It's good size, not too big and bulky either. You've got a button where you can actually lower the vehicle down with your adjustable suspension. You can start it, open up the rear lift back, and another nice feature here is we've got the automatic pop-down running boards right there. So. I already had it unlocked so they didn't come down right away, but when you approach the vehicle, these will come down. You've got approach lighting right here as well, so everything looks really nice. And another thing, as you should expect with luxury vehicles, the back doors also have the smart key system. Now let's take a look at these front seats. So we've got this Palermo leather, which is really nice. Now let me tell you, these seats are extremely comfortable. There's not much to complain about here. So. The material itself is soft, but it feels supportive at the same time. It is like a softer, comfortable seat without being squishy, if you know what I mean. I mean, you've got big bolsters right here. You've got ventilation. They're just very robust, well-built seats. The Grand Wagoneer even illuminates at night, which is pretty cool. The steering wheel is power tilt and telescoping and it's connected to memory settings. Those of you that are taller or shorter, you also have power adjustable pedals. So you can move those pedals in or out, whatever makes it comfortable for you. In addition to that, you also have memory settings. You got two memory settings on the door. They don't show up right now because the vehicle is not on. And your seat controls are over here, but you have more on the main screen, which I will show you. So if you go to comfort, you can do it on here or you can do it on the lower screen down there. You can go to seats. You can adjust all of the different parts that you want. The lumbar, whether it's higher or lower, lumbar, how much support you get in or out, even the squeezing of the back bolsters right there and extending your thigh bolsters here as well. You and the passenger, plus you've got these massage functions. You can turn them on right here. You can adjust how intense things are. You can determine whether or not it's on your butt or your back or both. And these are some comfortable massagers. They're not super intense, but I like having these different options on here and the ability to adjust them. That's again, you and the passenger. And over here on your seat control dial thing, you can push this button to make it turn on. Then you got your memory settings right there. The heated and ventilated buttons are over here. They are heated and ventilated. You can control whether or not it's, first of all, it's three tier, or you can have it be on just the back or the butt or both ventilated seats and heated steering wheel and like i said these are comfortable seats this is my first week being able to drive the grand wagoneer and i have enjoyed every moment of it i mean you can even adjust the headrest forward and backwards with the control on the door and that's usually my biggest complaint with seats they're not too firm they're not too soft they are just right now it is second row time and things get pretty nice back here so first of all you have these pull-up sunshades these are manual sunshades but this entire door panel is really soft and comfortable as an armrest so if you're actually chauffeuring people it's a nice place to be and fairly luxurious as well you've got captain's chairs here so we've got these two seats with a big center console in the middle and we have the optional entertainment package which gives us a couple of large screens for entry we've got handles here we've got our air conditioning vents right there we also have more air conditioning vents in the back of the seat. So with this display right here, this is an optional feature. We've got the Jeep Wi-Fi network that we can connect to, and then you can pretty much just operate this thing like a little tablet. You can even plug in an HDMI. So you've got headphones that you can go with this too, and each side gets their own, which is really cool. Quick look, you've got remote storage in here as well, and a couple of USB ports inside of there. 
pop this thing up, you've got a massive, massive storage area overall. We even get our own little climate control screen. Check this out. You've got your own heated seats. You've got ventilated seats, both sides. You can adjust your temperature over here. You can synchronize it to both sides. You can adjust the fan speed. You've got complete control over your climate in the back seat here. In addition to that, right over here, we've got USB-C, USB-A on both sides. Plus below that, we've got a couple more ports. We've got a three prong, 115 volt outlet and a 12 volt power outlet over there. As far as legroom goes, got the seat all the way back now and I've got plenty of knee space and foot space but I got to tell you if you have rear facing car seats or even front facing car seats the kids feet or the back of the car seat does impede with this so my car seats I had to move my seat up a little bit which I did not want to do when I had a car seat in here and I'm five foot nine so I'm not tall if you are tall you might want to consider whether or not you want to get this if you've got kids in the back. These seats can also recline. So I'm telling you, this goes way back. Good leg room, good reclining, comfortable armrests, and all the climate controls that go with it. It is a really nice place to be. It just doesn't have massage like the front seats. Otherwise, you're living large back here. Now it's third row time. A lot of time the third row is a place you get banished or exiled to for bad behavior or if you're a mother-in-law, but you just push that button, then it's really easy to get in. I mean, look at this. You've got a lot of space right here. You've even got power controls right there, buttons, but look how much room you have to get in here. And look at the height of those seats. They're not super low into the floor, so let's check them out. All right, now I have this seat right in the middle of its track kind of towards the front and i've still got i've got a lot of foot space a ton of knee space right here even in the middle there's a ton of leg room right there and the fact that this seat is elevated is really really nice because it's like it actually gives me some thigh support third row also gives us a cup holder a soft armrest you can recline the seat with this button and you've got two usb charging ports and even a little storage here not to mention you got your own little climate control vent or your your own little ac vent right there you also have a hook built in into the third row too but wait there's more check it out in addition to that giant screen which you'll see we also have this one this this third row sunroof pretty cool huh the other side gives you those cup holders as well as the charging ports too. Now with this seat all the way back, I still have enough foot space and knee space. My foot gets a little tight right here, not a lot of space, but under the seat, that works pretty well. And I can sit up tall with a hat so you can put tall passengers and adults in the third row and it's pretty nice. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is actually probably wide enough to be a comfortable three across third row. Now, as we hop inside the Grand Wagoneer, things are very, very nice in here. You've got multiple different screens in here, which I'll show you, but let's go ahead and start it up. Push button start right there. Got a big digital display, a nice little welcome Grand Wagoneer display right there. So steering wheel controls are very simple and easy to use. You've got controls for your display. You've got audio controls on the back of the steering wheel, automatic uh, adaptive cruise control stuff over there and your driver assist feature can all be controlled on that stock and then this uh i like the steering wheel honestly you know some people i've heard people complain about this like classic two-spoke design but i like that i like being able to have all this open space down here it's a very comfortable big and kind of beefy steering wheel and it's really really nice this entire door panel is also really nice aside from your seat controls and massage controls metal piece right here nice trim soft material there soft for your armrest good grab handle right here all automatic one touch windows everything is really nice even this down here is not your typical like hard scratchy plastic huge open storage bin plus this is big enough for a big old mug like that and just to the inside here we've got our light controls electronic parking brake into your brightness and ambient light controls and your power pedal switch this display in front gives us a bunch of different information so i'm just going to go through some of it you've got different trip computer info on here you can kind of see the little tab up there all the available information and each page typically has a couple of different screens to it as well you can adjust your head up display so this i can go to night vision which be sure to check out my night review if you want to see what that looks like your driver assist features all kinds of stuff vehicle specific info it's really really nice and a very clear screen overall in front of us we get a big old head up display as well this has a good amount of information that shows up on it too 
Then coming over here, take a look at this big screen. So we've got one large screen right there. Plus down here, you've got a button right there you can push and you've got a climate screen right here. Check it out. Look at all of this on there. So you've got your comfort settings for the most part down here. You can adjust everything with your seat. As I showed you, you've got the massage function on there. You can turn it off or you can get it up out of the way and unveil more charging ports, charging mat, HDMI port, and even a 12 volt power outlet. And a little extra room for storage like keys or things like that. And one cool thing also is that we've got these little wedges in there. So you've got these little tiny slots. You can stick a phone or something and have it sitting like that. So you can have like three phones here and one charging or have them plugged in too. And that's pretty cool. But this main display has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. On the left, you've got your climate settings right here or your heated and ventilated seat controls, heated steering wheel, both for you and your passenger. You have these long dials for volume and tuning on each side. You've got these big shortcuts on the bottom, even though it is all touchscreen right there. I appreciate that. Plus the dual zone climate control has their own dedicated buttons across the bottom here too. You can get into more detail with your climate controls by hitting the comfort icon on the screen. And as you can see, it was a little delayed right there. You can go to a bunch of vehicle specific settings on here. You can have a shortcut screen like this. And there's a couple really cool things. You've got a fam cam. Check this out. You can see every passenger seat right there, or you can tap on a seat and get a better look at it. Parents, this is awesome. You can check on your kids or if you've got pets or something, check on your cargo back there. You got a passenger screen over there, which I'll show you in a second. You can control your power steps. You can automatically go to your surround view camera. And it's not quite as nice or detailed as some, like it doesn't have a bunch of different views, but you've got some of the basics and you're still gonna have a 360 view over there. One other nice thing is you can fold the second or third row headrest down. So if nobody's sitting there, they're in your way, just push a button and boom, they will fold. Or you can hit the settings tab and go to a whole bunch more stuff over here. Check this out. So many different options to customize this vehicle the way you want it. Then down even lower, you've got some touch sensitive controls down there. Auto, uh, automatic brake hold, electronic start stop, your lane keeping system. You've got parking, you know, uh, parking sensors, tow haul mode. You can turn on the passenger screen over here. And then this is your actual parking assist. So it can parallel or perpendicular park for you. You can even control whether or not it uses the brake and accelerator pedals or just steers. It's up to you. Coming back even more, we've got our shifter right here. This actually feels pretty nice. We've also got our drive mode selector selections with this. We'll go through that in the test drive. And this is where you can control the height for your suspension right there. You even have a four wheel drive low button down there and your off-road cruise control, essentially. That's what I call it. Right here, there's a little storage slot next to the cup. You've got rubberized cup holders, so everything should stay in place pretty darn well right there. This armrest is interesting. So this is, you know, this is padded. You got this middle area. This slides out of the way. You've got a couple of charging ports in there. And then we have a cooler in here. It's an ice box. Can push that button turn it on and it will actually cool your drinks the grand wagoneer gives us a locking glove box it is kind of small right there though but it is softly lined overhead we get this automatic excuse me it's a, a digital mirror camera so you can have it be a camera or an automatic dimming rear view mirror we also have garage controls right up here on the visor we've got led lighting on the inside a little led light that comes down for ambient lighting plus we even have check this out We've got a triplane sunroof, moonroof. So we've got this first part, which is like a big panoramic roof. The glass can open up here. And then as, you'll, as you saw in the back, there's the glass in the back that opens up too, all the way to the third row. Now, as we take a look at this screen, here's the deal. I don't know if something's not working quite right, but this screen just does not get very bright. I've got the brightness turned all the way up, but this is a little passenger control screen where they can have control of stuff. Like if you're getting chauffeured around, you can also have, <laughs> I mean, you can have an HDMI port plugged in. You can have different music on here. You got headphone controls. You got um, the ability to have this on while someone is driving you if you want to. 
Now under the hood, things get pretty interesting. The last one that I showed you, the last Grand Wagoneer I showed you for a limited period of time had that 6.4 liter Hemi V8. Well, for 2024, it's gone. Now you get the Hurricane twin turbo engine, two different options, a standard output or a high output. This high output twin turbo Hurricane engine is a three liter inline six with 510 horsepower, 500 pound feet of torque paired with an eight speed automatic. Now there are three different four wheel drive systems that you'll get on here. This one has the most advanced, obviously with the series three Obsidian, the top dog of the Grand Wagoneer, and it can revert 100% of the power to the rear wheels. Miles per gallon is pretty terrible. 14 in the city, 20 on the highway, but that's kind of what you get with a huge vehicle like this. Towing is good around 9,800 pounds up to 10,000 pounds, which is actually with the standard output Hurricane engine. All right, y'all, we are now behind the wheel of this Grand Wagoneer, and I've gotta say, I have thoroughly enjoyed driving this as a big SUV. It's got good power, it's got good comfort, it's got good visibility and it's just very smooth overall even though we've got big wheels on here you can adjust the suspension we've got just a comfortable dynamic in pretty much every regard the ergonomics in here are good the ride comfort is good the way the steering feels is also good it is built on a truck frame so it may not be as comfortable as it possibly could be but it does have an independent suspension in the back to help make it comfortable and I think that Jeep did a nice job making this towing capable, off-road capable, comfort capable, and powerful. I mean, it's like all the luxury things that you would expect in one package. I would say my only real complaint here is that over some, even like little bumps, just like little things in the pavement, sometimes it can get a little jittery in here, but for the most part, very, very comfortable. We've got different drive modes that you can switch through in there. We are in auto mode, which is, you know, basically your normal or comfort mode. The head up display is clear, gives you a lot of information. You can turn that off or on. And if I get a little bit of pedal here, just partial pedal, it gets going in a hurry. And the thing with the turbo here, instead of the V8 that we had before, is you're gonna have a little more responsiveness in terms of not having to floor it. So a little bit more pedal again. Once the RPMs kick up, you get power coming out immediately. So as far as like driving in town, it's fantastic because you don't really ever have to get on it at all. It just gets out of it gets out of its own way very, very quick. Now let me put us in sport mode. All right, sport mode down there. It'll hold the RPMs up. It's gonna stiffen things with its responsiveness. Pedal down. It absolutely moves. It's like a, a dang race SUV. For how big it is, it's very impressive. I mean, you've got over 500 horsepower. That's just awesome. Pedal down. Dang. It even sounds nice. I mean, you don't hear a ton of engine sound, but it sounds aggressive. If I go back into auto mode, things are gonna settle down a little bit. It's comfortable. And when you're driving, it'll give you messages on here on if you get up to a certain speed, I think it's like 65 or 70, it'll drop you down into aero mode. So it should help with efficiency when it keeps you there. You can adjust that with the control dial over there. But in terms of handling, it does get some body lean not a ton i mean a fair amount a little less than what you would expect for how big this vehicle is but overall i think it it's very composed for the most part it's it's 100 percent like a luxury vehicle in terms of the way it drives it's also very quiet you get a little bit of road noise but basically no wind noise you've got laminated glass on the side over here and it's just all around a very nice driver as it should be for this price point so if you want to tow, if you want to go off road, if you want to haul people around, if you just want something big and comfortable and powerful, this answer is the call. Not to mention, while you're cruising, just turn your massaging seats on, then you might just fall asleep. Now we're gonna get on a rougher textured road here. This is where we can get a decent amount of road noise in most vehicles. And again, a nice responsive powertrain. So this is about as much noise as you're gonna get in here. 
and it's still pretty quiet. You can have a conversation in here, no problem. The transmission, in addition to the power output from this engine, the transmission has been spot on. I haven't had any rough shifting or jerkiness at all that I can think of in my time with this, which is pretty rare in a lot of transmissions. So I hope you enjoyed this test drive. I appreciate the ergonomics of everything. The screen is easy to reach. There's no touch dial control or anything like that, but overall, things are nice. Now to wrap things up on this Jeep Grand Wagoneer, this thing is insane. That's really the only thing I can think of to say about it because it offers so much, it's so expensive, it's completely unnecessary, but it's really awesome at the same time. Like I said before, you've got the space, you've got power, you've got towing and even some off-road capability to go with it, and it's a huge, luxurious family hauler. So, I mean, you can do all of that, have luxury, have all the capability that you need all in one big vehicle right here. So if you're looking for a big, luxurious three-row, would you go for this? Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.